Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whichever part of the world you are joining us from, Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, powered by the Global Magazine, the Global Alliances, proudly welcome you all to this exclusive interview series in connection with World MSME Day 2022. In this series of interviews, we'll be looking at global perspectives of coordinated efforts to the post-pandemic economic recovery of MSMEs. I'm Aparna Ji Kumar, the Global Co-Chairperson of GCPIT and your host for the show. Every year on June 27th, Micro, Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Day or MSME Day is celebrated to honor their role in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Small and medium-sized enterprises or SMEs account for up to 90% of businesses, 60 to 70% of employment, and they account for half of global GDP, according to the UN. The Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade is an organization based in India, South Africa, US, UK, and UAE with board and council member representation across the world. We have been celebrating World MSME Day since 2018. And this year, we are celebrating this day with global perspectives from various leaders, departments, ministries, chambers of commerce, and international organizations. We believe that global perspectives have a significant role to play in paving the way for the future. Today, we have with us Ms. Funke Susan Medun from Nigeria. She is the CEO of Leap World Limited. She is an accredited and World Bank trained full service business development support and human resources consultancy with global alliances. She comes with about a decade of experience with top banks before she joined the consulting industry. She has committed herself to help entrepreneurs, NGOs, and already established businesses perform their best. She has worked on projects and implemented training programs in different countries for organizations like the World Bank, GEM Project, Bank of uh, Industry, Nigeria, and many, many more. I can't read all this. She is doing an amazing job in supporting businesses, and she has been on the forefront of MSME's development, ad advocacy, and conceptual conceptualize the project and conceptualize and project manage the annual United Nations MSME Day celebration program, partnering with key stakeholders in Nigeria since 2018. Funke is also very active in community development and she's a volunteer in financial education trainer. She's a volunteer of financial education trainer with the Financial Literacy for All Project Nigeria in collaboration with Commonwealth UK and a life skills trainer with the Lagos Eco Education Project World Bank funded. Let me proudly invite a person who believes if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Welcome, Ms. Funke Medun, to our show. Thanks for joining us today in this very important discussion on SMEs. Thank you so much, Apana. Oh, yes, you have to keep being something. Whatever you do, just keep moving. Yeah, that's it. That's good an amazing morning, thought. Good I... afternoon, wherever the listeners are from. So I'm glad to be here. That's an amazing profile you have, Ms. Medun. Can you please tell us uh, how it all started and what have been your experience in supporting SMEs? Oh, yeah. And um, I bring greetings from Nigeria. And we're also very excited, if we're limited, to join the world in celebrating the micro, small, and medium enterprises. And of course, we know that from several research and findings and surveys and reports that they contribute immensely to the GDP of, of the globe and their respective countries. So how did it start for me? Um, if, like, that's what you read in my profile. So I had a background in the banking sector. And of course, we know that Everybody deals with MSMEs in a way. Either you are employing, uh, you, are, you are dealing with them in, in the area of being the supplier, you are working with them as vendors, or you are one yourself. So whichever way, everybody relates with the MSME one way or the other. So I can say from the beginning of my career, even working in the bank, I've been working with micro, small, and uh, medium enterprises in different capacities as their banker, as advising them, and of course, moving into the consulting space. And I'm so excited that, uh, I mean, organizations and institutions like here are also promoting, you know, the relevance and providing support for small businesses all over the world. So for me, we, we also joined celebrating the UNMSME business in 2018. And I'm glad that we're having this kind of global alliance, you know, to discuss further on their importance. That's amazing. Uh, what you said is right. In uh, one way or other, we all are dealing with MSMEs. And three years into the pandemic, we all know that the whole world is facing the challenges of COVID, right? 
and uh, msmes are among those that have been hit hardest by the crisis how do you think has been the recovery of msme sector so far during and post covid so i can talk for my country and I, I think if we look at it from a global space according to me and according to the reports that we've seen uh, pre covid uh, during covid and post covid has given different uh, layers of um, economy uh, insight. So, and I can say from my own personal research, so I, I'm being a, currently conducting a research on MSMEs in one of the, some parts of Nigeria. And my findings from my research report, uh, looking at the surgery before COVID, during and after, I discovered that there's a huge difference, okay? So during, before, people, I looked at the level of operations. I mean, using that as a benchmark for my surgery on their survival and their operations. So pre-COVID, people reported that they had normal operations, okay? During COVID, a lot of people said it decreased, level of operations decreased, but post-COVID, you could say that most of them are coming back. Some people totally shut and they are yet to recover. That's, that's what my own findings told me. But uh, over 50% of them are gradually coming out. And even if we like, look at it from Nigerians, Nigerians' point of view, government there also realized the impact of COVID on businesses. And in order to help them to recover, there's been a lot of policies here that the government has put in place. In fact, if we look at the Nigerian microeconomic policy, which is embedded in the medium term expenditure and the fiscal strategy for 2019 to 2021. So government has been trying to look at uh, the part of the policies that also would help businesses generally. And of course, small businesses are not, um, are not alienated. We had our own issue before COVID. We went into recession in Nigeria. So it even made it worse. Okay, and that the government had to come up with national economic growth and recovery program, okay, GRP 2017 to 2021. So we even battled with our own recession here locally. Then COVID now came and compounded our problem. But there's been a lot of things. I, I can't say that uh, the economy is ailing, just trying to uh, barely come out of uh, our recession, the effects of COVID-19. But some sectors like the hospitality sector, you can see that there are a lot of them are pivoted. Okay, so the businesses that have pivoted locally here, they've been able to come up with innovations, innovative products, in order to not to only survive, but to also help them with growth. And that's what has happened to us locally here. And my next question actually was about the policies, like what are the key highlights of uh, policies and strategies for building a self-reliant economy in your country as of now? And can this percolate down well into the micro enterprises as the majority of MSMEs are micro units? And what uh, changes do you suggest? Okay, so um, talking Nigeria here, we have what we call the national policy on micro, small and medium enterprises. So, I mean, the government, has put something like that in place dedicated to the MSME. So we actually have a national policy. And this policy look at key policy areas such as finance, the institutional and legal framework. We look at skill development areas. We look at technology research and development, extension and support services, marketing and infrastructure and cost of doing business. So those are the key policy areas that the national policy for my country looks at. And if we, if we say that some of these policies specifically uh, in implementing them will be the issue because it's not just enough to have policies on paper. How do we implement? What are the specific strategies and efforts and inputs that government has done? So here in Nigeria, looking at those policies, government has also looked at revamping a lot of policies to help businesses generally to uh, come out of uh, if effect of COVID-19 and, and grow. And specifically, some were tailored to support small businesses. So we have the Finance Act, for example, in Nigeria that was signed into law recently. And some components of the Finance Act were geared towards specifically supporting small businesses, like reclassification of the kind of taxes they are paying, okay? And what amount of turnover? Because a lot of turnovers did for the small businesses. So it's not good to burden them with tax again. So government specifically had some parts of the Finance Act that also would help small businesses in their growth and survival. Another policy that government specifically came up was the Kama 
Okay, so if you look at from the, from the regulatory framework, that also helps small businesses on uh, the burden of maybe filing of their annual returns, how many people can, you know, form uh, a limited liability company, you know, so there are a lot of specific uh, strategies and policy implementation that uh, locally here, the government has put in place, but are they very effective? You know, that's another discussion. Yeah, that's another dis discussion, how effectively the implementation have been. But you can see that the number of efforts locally here by the government trying to, to uh, support the MSMEs locally, right? So as a banker and a business development support professional, what according to you is the situation of MSME financing, financing instruments in your country during and post COVID-19? Yeah, so uh, government has come up with a lot of, I'm, I'm talking government because government has a big role to play in supporting small businesses. You know, we know government cannot do everything, but government uh, has a role to play. Again, when I talk about what they've done, whether they're efficient or effective is another uh, total discussion, but what are some of the things that they've done uh, to put it? And I'll, I'll give you my opinion afterwards, what they could have done differently also. So uh, some of the things they've done here were to come up with a lot of, I, I mentioned policy and implementation, like some of the things from even the policies that would help them in terms of access to funding. But, and they came up with a lot of initiatives, like uh, there were, uh, so there were various fiscal and monetary policies, okay? They were put in place and palliatives. So we had palliatives in Nigeria. Some of them were the COVID-19 recovery funds, where government uh, put in place, uh, put a fund together that is was strictly meant for small businesses from in the heat of the COVID-19 in 2020. So small businesses were uh, given opportunity to access that particular funding. And it was at a single digit interest rate. The tenor was also made very flexible. Other things they tried to do were things like cash transfers, you know, some specific local product called trader money. When the money is so much, okay, maybe they could have done better because sometimes when you get those monies, I'm like, will it really impact the business? But again, you see that they made effort. So you see, they also had things around special product registration window for, for organizations into construction, into uh, production and manufacturing. So here we have the, what we call NAVDAC, okay? They work with regulating, uh, manufacturing sectors in terms of trademark, registering what they needed to do. So there were special product registration windows that they had to lower the costs for small businesses. They had to make the terms and conditions more flexible. So they came up with cottage registration products. You know, there were also uh, loan concessionary rates for even existing loans and new loans that were taken during that period. So you could say that there were a number of things that the government put in place. And you see there were also grants so there were a number of grants. And there's something we call here, it, it was supported by the World Bank. Uh, we call it uh, NGKs, which was another product that was meant to also support small businesses locally here. And that was um, dissipated to states, even at various state levels. So you could see all the different state governments plugging into that. They had a uh, test set up for that and came up with a lot of initiatives with that fund, with the support of the World Bank that uh, they, they had to use to support small businesses in, in, based on the specific needs and implementation plan of their different states. So those so, so were some of the things. In my opinion, was that enough? Maybe not, okay? Was it easy to assess? Maybe the terms of assessing it could have been more transparent. Maybe it could have been more, uh, the terms could have been more clear but it was put in place and some people benefited. In fact, my friend benefited from one of those financial interventions, not as grants, but as uh, an affordable loan with flexible plans. So, I mean, those are some of the things that we have here. And we see a lot of NGOs, a lot of corporate bodies also trying to provide support in terms of funding, even teaching funding skills, because it's not enough for you to just get funding to support the MSME ecosystem. That's great to know. And uh, what about the job creation uh, scenario? What is the current scenario uh, creating uh, jobs in the MSMA sector? OK, 
Okay, so in the SME sector, especially during the uh, peak of the COVID-19, job uh, creation reduced according to what research showed there. Uh, however, one thing that I find very interesting post-COVID, there was a survey done by the Small Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, SMIDAN, which is the government agency in charge of uh, regulating small businesses here in Nigeria. So the survey, we had, uh, if we compare the 2020 survey to the 2017 survey, there was a great revelation. Although the numbers of MSMEs reduced here locally, it decreased by about 3.7% from uh, 39.6 million as at the 2017 survey to 41 million as at the 2020 survey. But one thing I find very interesting, job creation increased. Isn't that interesting? So there was an increase in job creation from 59 million jobs created to 61 million jobs. When, I mean, post, almost coming out of the post uh, the COVID to post COVID period. But at the heat of the COVID period, a lot of organizations shut down. A lot During the lockdown, a number of organizations, especially the small businesses, closed shop. So some had to lay off some of their staff. Uh, some had to totally shut down. Of course, that affected job creation and the number of jobs created uh, reduced. But there was a survey done by the Small Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, SMIDAN, which is the agency in charge of small businesses creation in Nigeria. And the most recent survey, 2020 MSME survey, uh, they did in collaboration with the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, NBS, revealed that even though numbers of small businesses in Nigeria uh, uh, shrunk from 39.6 million I mean, from 41 million that we had according to the 2017 survey to 39.6 million in the last survey, it decreased by about 3.7%. But the number of jobs created actually increased slightly. Okay, that's, that's what the survey told us. Okay, and so we can say that as the MSME are trying to recover from the shock of the COVID-19, they are coming back, you know, you could see slight growth. And I also told you that even from my own research that I, I did in my organization and for my own personal work, uh, when I looked at the, um, if surgery pre, during and post COVID, I saw that normal operations started increasing. So there was growth actually afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so we can relate that to the fact that it's possible that they were able to create uh, some jobs at that point. Mm -hmm. But you see, we now have a slight problem here in the areas of job creation. Mm -hmm. The skills needed now changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now people need to become more innovative. Mm -hmm. Technical skills are more in demand. Then the workforce. So the challenge for a lot of the small businesses, even as they look, seeing opportunities to grow, because a lot of them now became innovative. Okay, so they could take on more staff. So to now have employable uh, uh Employability in the job market now became a, a problem. You know, employment can be there, but to now get fit from the employment market now became another challenge that MSMEs are trying to tackle. Yeah, but we could see growth and numbers of uh, jobs created are also growing as uh, we are coming out of the shocks of the COVID-19. Those that we are facing That's another problem of skills in the market. <laughs> That's interesting, Kidu. And uh, what do you think of uh, public-private partnerships? What impact do PPPs have on economic growth, according to you? And how are the leaders promoting it? Okay, so um, talking about PPP, that's the way to go. And you can see that globally, uh, that, that's what the governments and leaders globally are embracing. I said something earlier that the government cannot do everything. Okay, in fact, in some parts of uh, the world, maybe I should take my own country, for example, you, you wonder and ask yourself that government has no business in being in this business. Okay, let them just face a uh, social governance and leave things that uh, has to do with um, uh, some things on the commercial level for the private investor. So collaborating becomes very great. Okay, when the public and the private come together to, to work. So it's supposed to help. And you could say that, um, it, that, that's very supportive. Locally here, my country has done uh, a number of things to support that. And you can see, so in, here, the government inaugurated what we call the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission, okay, ICRC. 
see. And so that was actually inaugurated here in order to promote and support uh, uh, and put a framework around PPP here in Nigeria. So some things also become enforceable. Okay, because I mean, two sides of the coin, government has a role to play, public, the private partner also has a role to play. So it's good to have a framework that supports the implementation of the partnership. And so that's what they've inaugurated locally here. And, and that has helped. In fact, I'm on the board of one of such companies in one of the states in Nigeria. And we are looking at uh, creating jobs in thousands. And so you can imagine how that will help the economic growth of that particular state. And of course, it will help the nation as a whole. So I, I think it, it's a way to go and government should promote it. I think doing enough, to be honest with you, I'm not very sure. I mean, this is my own personal assessment, but are they really in the right direction? Are they embracing it? Locally, I can say, yes, they are. And I, I just told you one of the things they did by inaugurating the ICRC in Nigeria, right? Thank you for sharing that. And have you thought of a strategy for creative economic development for MSMEs? If so, can you please share it with us? Okay, so looking at the strategies that um, we can look, use for creating economic development here, especially for enterprises. So uh, this uh, what I think could help small businesses to grow. There are a number of things that government could put in place. Uh, if, if I look locally from our own national policy for MSME, so a number of strategies have been uh, highlighted, has been, um, you know, discovered and focused on. But it's not just to look at this strategies area. So we can go back to even strategies around funding. We can look at our finance. We can look at strategies around, you know, institutional and legal framework that supports what they do. I mean, things around technology, even R&D, the world is moving. So we have to be ahead of what is going to happen, you know? We have to move with the trend globally. So, I mean, things around infrastructure and cost of doing business, also ease of doing business. So specific things that they could be doing locally here. So if I break it down to implementing it, you know, we could have funding plans that support small businesses, easy to assess, you know, uh, maybe single digit interest rates that, I mean, having uh, MSME banks, for example, yes, I know we have microfinance banks, but it's not enough to just have microfinance bank. Government can also uh, have some, some kind of support, maybe trust funds. I know some uh, governments here, some state governments have something like that, like the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund in Lagos State, part of Nigeria, for example. They are doing a lot. So they have a fund dedicated to supporting small businesses. So we can have more of that across the country. Okay, and because it will be tailored to the uniqueness of MSMEs. It's different from when they go to the commercial bank. So we, so we can have MSME banks, we can have things around business development support services. Because, you know, MSMEs have their own unique features and characteristics. So they need support in the area of mark, areas of access to market, access to technology, you know, access to uh, human resource, which is a key concern and pain point for them. You know, we could have hubs you know, MSME hubs, things around risk, you know, even, even if they have to uh, get funding to support. So we, we could have co collateral register here, which I know has been on paper and we've been talking around this for a long time here in my country, for example, but it's not been implemented. So, so those are some of the things, specific strategies that we can use to develop uh, the, the economy and support MSMEs creatively in the list is not exhaustive okay but i mean those are specific things i think we can do globally and here in nigeria to support the small businesses thank you so much that and of course so global ideal. alliances like yours we need to be comparing notes with other countries some countries are well ahead of us you know so it's good to compare notes and learn from them what works and collaborate Thank you for sharing that. And uh, uh, we all know that COVID-19 was a wake-up call, right? And what advice would you like to give to MSMEs across the globe? What precautions should be taking, they be taking in case of any crisis, not like COVID, but in any, uh, any type of crisis? So for me, one of the things I did during the lockdown was to start talking about business sustainability planning. I think this is a wake up call. So it's not just enough for us, whether as small business to, to say that uh, we are running a business. You know, COVID-19 came upon us unplanned, unprepared. We just woke up and the whole world was in chaos. You know, the supply chain was uh, disrupted. 
businesses were affected, funding, and it just came, the pandemic affected all of us, okay? So we should have a business continuity plan in place. I mean, that's the first thing I think I have to highlight for small businesses, so that when we have situations of disruptions like these, we can activate our business sustainability plan. I think if people don't have it before, not just to have a business plan, okay, but I'm talking about if chaos happens, if risk collapse, uh, consolidates, what do we do? So we need to start looking at our business, the pros and cons, the risks that can come and start planning for them. That's what I would say. But not enough to just look at risk and planning. We have to also embrace research and development in our own small way. We have to look at knowledge management. A lot of us were forced to work from home. Okay, so some organizations could not work from home, especially small businesses, because of the way their knowledge uh, was managed in the organization. It was centered around the owner or a key man risk. So other people will not be able to work remotely. So we need to start creating systems and structures. And I'm an advocate of that. So that will help us. I usually tell, use this analogy that if you have a plan for growth, then you should set up your foundation in such. If I want to be like a 10 story building, then my, my foundation should not be a foundation of one story building. Okay, so we should start embracing systems and structures in our businesses. We should have a business continue to plan in place and we should be able to have things around managing knowledge system generally and of course we have to embrace innovation you know we have to evolve otherwise we'll just die <laughs> you know so that's what i would like to say to small businesses right uh, and before we end i would uh, like to ask you would you like to add something more oh yes you know uh, if i would like to add more it will be exhaustive I, I think is we also need government to support okay so uh small businesses don't exist alone we are in an ecosystem so this is a time for uh, government to also uh holistically look at what provides over 70 percent to your DG gdp that's not what you want to uh overlook so government also should look at doing more and you know the ecosystem should also uh, look at how they can support holistically. And we have to embrace uh, innovative ways of partnering with other people, even globally uh, uh, as small businesses. And if you, I also like to use this call to call on uh, even uh, NGOs, uh, you know, uh, MSME partners globally to see how all of us can rally around the ecosystem uh, to make it more developed. Right. We Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. As uh, Ms. Funke said, we all deal with MSMEs in one way or other. So each one of us have a huge responsibility to support the recovery of MSMEs. Government has been supporting, NGOs and corporates have been playing their roles. And as she said, let us all have a business sustainability plan. Let us work on our business continuity plan and let us focus on innovation. And thank you so much. Uh, wish you all the best for your research. I hope your research uh, gives a lot for more insight on the written recovery of MSMEs. Thank you so much, Ms. Punky Medun, for your valuable inputs on the serious issue on MSMEs. Thank you for having me, Apana. Glad I, I, I did this. <laughs> so we do more of this. <laughs> Thank right, you. right, right. Thank you so much for joining us today. And let's hope this discussion is a small step uh, in towards creating a huge change, not just in your country, but globally. Wish you all the best oh, in your future you. endeavors. And as we all know, MSMEs are the backbone of any economy and they are badly hit during the pandemic. Let's come together and help the SMEs recover and come back to normal. If you are an expert on MSMEs and you have an opinion to share, we would like to invite you to join us in the discussion. Please mail us at contact at gcpid.us. And if you are an MSME and have any questions to ask or concerns to express, please comment under this video. We will take it up with the experts. We are on a mission mission 100 million, a mission to touch the lives of 100 million entrepreneurs. If you would like to join us and be a part of this game-changing mission, you can contact us through mail or you can find us on all social media as GCPIT Global. Let's work together, change the world, brick by brick. Let us be the change we wish to see in this world, as Mahatma Gandhi said. See you all in our next session with another expert leader on MSMEs. Till then, this is Apanaji Kumar signing off. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a great day.